This is Michael Kaufman from Innovation Labs and iPadinschools.com. This short video is about the digitization of media and what I believe is the tipping point for all consumption of media. We used to experience accessing media through analog devices like the uh, newspaper, magazines, radio, television, and you know changing channels and we'd access information and media in that way. We morphed that when the advent of the internet, <clears throat> we started accessing information, similar types of content through websites, blogs, RSS feeds, Twitter feeds, and Facebook feeds. And then most recently, the tipping point has arrived, and now we're accessing the same media through apps. Everything is uh, now accessed through a small application that has been designed specifically to access specific types of content. With the advent of Apple's iPad and the iPhone and the iStore, the uh, Apple iTunes uh, App Store, and then recently Apple's announcement of the App Store for Macintosh and Google's announcement of the App Store for Chrome. Basically all of our content will be accessed through apps. Let's see what that looks like on the iPad. So let's look at uh, what this looks like on the iPad. Here is, this. we'll start with the uh, newspaper. This is the current newspaper, the New York Times. If you can flip through stories and if you find a story you're interested in, you touch the story and you can look at the story. If there's an embedded video in the story or pictures, you can actually look at those. They're um, <clears throat> quite a nice interface. And if you want to uh, read another story, you can just slide through the stories this way and say that's the one you want. Or you can go back to the top news of the day and you can look at the sections. And if you want to see, so there's the top news for the day. So that's what a newspaper looks like today. And let's look at what a magazine looks like today. This is Wired Magazine. And this is the only app that I'll show that actually costs money. Memorial Stadium at UC Berkeley has this is an embedded uh, multimedia. Right, right down the middle and under the goalpost. You can so the university recently the article, $321 engage, million engage with the article differently. Sections of seating over the fault have been converted into surface rupture blocks. They're built Stop on the video if you'd like. Look at the other content on a timeline. We'll go back to the beginning of it. One of the, this is the cover of the magazine is actually a video format. And just one other thing to show you in this, this is an advertisement. This is what it looks like to engage with an advertisement in a digital magazine. That's just one example. Again, stories, you can just flip through them. You can read them if they're <clears throat> interesting. You can engage with them. This, this content in a different way so you touch something and the text shows up so that's what a magazine looks like in today's uh, new app format and let's go look at radio this is a personal radio this is personalized radio where you can create your own stations based on artists that you're interested in and it's called Pandora and this is a radio station with I set up on Mozart and because this is a multitasking uh, operating system now, you could actually keep this playing in the background while you surf other sites. We'll move on to another radio station. Uh, and most of us are familiar with National Public Radio. This is National Public Radio, no longer tuned on your dial. This is actually accessed in the form of an app. Again, you get to scroll through and look at different types of stories. And if you find something that you're interested in, you can actually uh, touch the story and you can engage with it. it this is, uh, actually was a radio broadcast, so you can listen to the broadcast or you can read the broadcast here where it's scribed through. This is uh, actually, oh, sorry, I went actually through to the, I touched the advertisement. There was an advertisement. And... Uh, so let's let's look at this is the uh, it's morning edition from NPR News. Good morning. I'm this Steve is how Steve you listen to the radio these days. People finish buying their Christmas presents or wrapping the one. 
Then let's look at television. This is a television station. We'll start with CNN News, CNN News. If you again, if you're interested in um, scrolling through news stories, you can see it updates in real time because we're connected to the to the internet. If you're interested in a particular story, you can touch it. This one, I believe, will be video. This is ad supported, so I imagine that we'll see the video in just a second here. This is the big, you know, story right now. Is everyone's traveling at this yeah. moment, and this is the latest. The uh, Washington Post. Was it so again, you can interact with uh, television stations in a completely different way. We'll go back to the to the uh, top stories here. So this is this is a television station, and let's just look at one more television station or another news, it's financial news. This one is in particular is real time. And uh, you'll notice at the bottom of this, uh, this uh, markets have closed when I'm recording this, but you'll notice at the bottom you'll still see a, a real-time a ticker floating past uh, at the bottom. And you can flip through. Again, you have access to news. You can look at news stories and read them in a, in a simple interface. Or you can actually look at videos as well. So again, this is... Um, what the current television station is you can tune into and actually we should probably look at one more television station which I wasn't thinking of before I wonder if I have it up here yeah ABC so if you want to just watch your favorite television from ABC in this particular case this is instead of dialing in a television channel you can simply go to your to your favorite uh, to your favorite television show and uh, begin watching it The following presentation is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Columbia Sportswear. Hey! So that's another television station. And then one last thing it'd be good to show you is this is what... Um, this is a beautiful application called Flipboard, which shows actually a... It's formatting into a magazine format, my Facebook feed, my Twitter feed, my Google Reader, RSS feeds, plus any other Twitter feeds that I've subscribed to. So this is in fact, a, my Google Reader feed is now formatted in, in the form of a magazine. So I just flip through the pages. I can access content if I'm interested in. I can touch the content. And the way this works is it actually has a browser built in so I can I can look at if it if it links out to other content outside of of this interface I can view the original article and it has a browser built in so I can surf the web and then go back to my RSS feed without without leaving this interface which is a pretty remarkable a remarkable thing slow internet connection so here's here is the actual web page, and if we wanted to, we could go surf, surfing around here, and if not, we can close that and go back to the RSS feed. Again, going back here, this is whole bunches of RSS feeds, and in this particular case, this is some Twitter feeds that are been from some magazines. So here's ABC News. If I'm interested, this is ABC News's Twitter feed. If I touch an article here again. This is what you would see in Twitter is just the top 140 characters, but working uh, Flipboard has worked with ABC News and some of these other publishers to format their articles in a way that's comfortable for this particular interface. Again, so that's what you would see in Twitter is just a short span, a short bit of text with a link, and here's that that article for easy access and reading. So I can flip through a tremendous amount of content in a very short period of time <clears throat> and subscribe to other Twitter feeds and my Facebook feed. This is what you would experience if you went to Facebook, except again, just as you would in Facebook, this is, uh, you would flip through content in a very different, a very, very different format.
So the future of media is here. It is apps, and that's what it looks like on the uh, iPad, and this is what it looks like on the computer. This is uh, Google's App Store for for apps, for web apps, for Google Chrome, and uh, they simply install on on the uh, on a new tab will will get you these apps. This is a couple of them that I have installed right here. This is the very same NPR. So this is the app on the computer. We're looking at NPR radio instead of looking at it on the iPad. It's the same exact interface. We can flip through different content and um, slide through different content. And, and if we find an article where, or a or something we're interested in, same as we did on the uh, on the iPad. This is the transcript of the the uh, the audio. This is listening to the audio. I believe it's playing. We should be able to hear it. And if not, I think it's channeled through the microphone. So maybe we can hear it. Maybe not. Anyway, that is what apps look like. And we'll just go to the New York Times real quick to see that this is, again, this what was a newspaper is now accessed in a completely different interface. Again, sections of the newspaper here. If you're interested in science, click on that. There's the articles. If you find an article that you're interested in, click on that. And you can easily read the article just by flipping through it. And when you're finished, just like the iPad, close the article and move on. Thank you for watching. This is Michael Kaufman from Innovation Labs and iPadinschools.com. For more information about Innovation Labs, go to innovationlabs.com and go to iPadinschools.com for information about that. See you in the next video. Thanks.